Welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Jerry and I like to explore IT things. Uh, and my particular interests are in cybersecurity and system administration. In this video, I'll be going over how to connect a client to a domain controller and we'll be changing DNS settings. We'll be making sure that the um, the client can communicate firstly to the domain controller without being connected. Then we will connect it and make sure that you can sign in using the admin account and then a user account that we created in our last video using our script. Um, so let's get started. So here we have, just like in our last video, our two virtual machines. We have our domain controller, DC1, and our client, client1. Um, to connect to the client, we need to use remote desktop. Uh, and so we need to know the public IP address, which is here. Um, and we need to copy that and then we also need to make take note of the um, private IP address of our virtual machine because what we're going to do is we're going to test the connectivity between the two um, we'll play around with the firewall in the domain controller and make sure that um, client one can ping DC one so let's get started with that so We'll connect to our machine. So here we're going to open um, PowerShell. We'll run as administrator. and we're going to ping our uh, domain controller. Dot four, pretty sure, let me just check that. Where dot five, usually the first machine you create is dot four. Yes, dot four. So we'll ping it. And we're receiving a reply. I'm just going to check the firewall settings within that machine because I'm confused as to why it's actually letting me through. So, go firewall, Windows Defender Firewall and Advanced Security. So, we'll go to Inbound Rules, make this bigger. Look at the from protocol okay so active directory domain controller uh, automatically sets up um, that ICMP which what is what ping uses um, to test the connectivity of a machine and it just sets it up that it's actually working and allows that traffic to go through so it can send the request and um, receive a reply before that, uh, that is connected, usually the core network diagnostics, the, this and this, so these two, uh, usually you're not able to ping. So you have to actually enable that rule for, to allow ping uh, to, to ping the domain controller before it has Active Directory. All right, so now we'll go back to our client and in our Azure portal, we need to actually set up the DNS to not be the DNS that's assigned to it when it's been created, but we need to set up the DNS to be the domain controller. And the re reason we do this is because we, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that the information that it's getting uh, to connect it to other computers or to connect it to the domain controller is correct um, and that it can actually communicate between networks and between like it within its own network within its own domain so we'll go to network we'll go to our network interface 
DNS servers and we'll make a custom DNS server. So we'll give it 10.0.0.4. It's all good, we'll save it. And this will restart in a minute. So we'll make sure that that's correct by restarting the virtual machine. We'll see that in a second. So now that we're back, we need to actually connect uh, this client to the domain. So to do that, we need to go into, uh, we right click on the start menu, we'll go to system, we'll go to down here, it says rename this PC advance. Sometimes if you have a smaller screen, um, this will, let me just resize this. Uh, appear like this, you just have to go right down to the bottom and rename this PC Advanced. Then at the moment it's set as a work group, um, which means that this, this computer is set to a small network and that, that works fine for smaller businesses, small organizations, um, where you're managing you know up to 10 computers. But when you start getting bigger, you want to be able to manage more things more easily and quickly. You'll be able to deploy software and that kind of stuff. So you want to change it to a domain. So what we'll do is to rename this computer or change its do its domain or work group, click change. So we'll click that. Then we'll change it to a member of domain. So this only works because we've already changed the DNS settings. So what this is going to do is I'm going to type in billy.com, which is as from the last video, billy.com is the domain we set up. Um, and when I type that in and I click enter, I click OK, it's going to send a request to the DNS server and say, who is billy.com? And the domain is going to say, I'm billy.com. Can you log in? Can you verify that you're, you're one of us? Um, and so, I'll type that in. So we made Billy Creel, B Creel, oh, sorry, Billy.com backslash B Creel and then password one. It's okay. And then once that's completed, it says welcome to Billy.com domain, which means you're connected. So now, when we finish this up, once I click close, it's gonna restart my computer. Because it just kinda of needs to reset all of the, the settings and make sure that it's um, all working correctly. So now what we need to do is, in this right here, where this computer is no longer, we can log in as the lo local user, which is lab user. Um, but no longer a just an ordinary user. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to log in as Billy Creel and as Billy Creel configure uh, who actually has access to this computer. We want to make sure that all domain users are able to log into this computer because if you can imagine in any organization, you don't want to have to be stuck on one machine. The reason why Active Directory and domain, domain services is great is because I can log in within that domain on any computer and I'm going to be able to access my stuff. And it kind of works like a remote desktop. So I'll type in billy.com slash bkreel password one. While that's loading, we want to make sure that um, the this client that we are setting up actually exists on the domain controller. So we will want to go to tools, active directory users and computers, and then we'll go to computers and we'll see that our client one 
is now available there. So what we want to do is we want to put that into our clients folder. And there it is. Go back to Billy Creel. And now what we're going to do is we're going to actually enable remote desktop for domain users. We'll go down to our start menu. We'll cl uh, click system. Far out, I can't speak. And then down here where it says remote desktop, click on that. Enable remote desktop. And then we want to, down here in user accounts, we want to select the users that can remotely access this PC. So we know that Billy, Billy Creel has access, but we want to add others. So here we'll go domain users. We'll check the names and then we'll okay that, okay that. then boom baby, everyone has access. So now the next thing is we want to connect as one of our average domain users. So I'll sign out as Billy Creel. And then we'll sign in. So who are we gonna choose? To choose an employee, Douge Lock, we'll do him. Him or her. So billy.com slash douche dot lock password one. So remember when you run this script, it will give the password as password one for all of your users that you've created. And here we are as douche lock. So let's see. Yep, so we're douche lock there. Click on settings, go accounts, our account, douche lock. We're part of the Billy domain. Um, and yeah, so as you can see, we've in this video, we've actually been able to do plenty of. Um, plenty of things by connecting the client to the domain, uh, domain controller. We've also been able to uh, allow remote desktop for all domain users. And then we've uh, connected using a random users account uh, into our Active Directory uh, domain uh, computer. So that was just how we connect up one client to a, com a domain controller. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, please hit the like button um, and let me know in the comments if I missed anything or if there's something else that you would have focused on or um, talked about. Have a great day.